Hi folks, uh, in this tutorial I would like to cover how I've created um, those uh, renders here of the warmy structure. Uh, some guys came across and asked me how how did I render that chromatic aberration and therefore feel lens blur kind of thing and uh, how did I set up the material so I would like to break down my project with you and um, maybe it will help you to create your own artworks later on. So let's get started. So inside uh, of Cinema I, um, I set up a, a little system. Let me just clear it up a bit for you. Uh, and the first thing I've I, I, I did was uh, I've applied a simple emitter from the simulate section. And the simulate uh, the emitter is emitting 30, 30 um, particles. Um, it's stopping its emission at frame one hundred and twenty-five. Uh, everything else is pretty at the default settings. The emitter is set to 5 by 5 centimeters and it also changes the angles uh, as, as far as possible to make it spread uh, the particles. I also added a turbulence uh, modifier kind of thing from the, um, from the particle menu and set its strength to 25 and its scale to 150 and then I added a friction object and bring down its strength to 8 so and when you play it back you just have, have a, you know, like a small cloud of particles flying around and you don't have to add any geometry uh, to the particles for the next step. The next step was to add a tracer from the MoGraph menu, tracer, and applying the emitter to the tracer. So when you do it, you can see it's generating splines from the movement of all particles. And I changed the spline settings to cubic with the subdivided settings with a maximum length of, of two centimeters. So yeah, it's, um, it's a bit better for, for the sweep nerves I was go, uh, applying to it. And that's the next step. You just have to add a sweep nerves object from the, from the nerves panel here. Add a, um, applying the tracer to the sweep and then I added a rectangle spline as the profile spline and this is set to 7 by 7 centimeters and uh, uh, intermediate points are set to adaptive. Um, it's always good to use rectangle splines within your sweep nerves because around uh, a round profile spline will cause a lot of more geometry to be calculated. Um, if you want to uh, make it look round, you can uh, go to the font tag of your sweep nerves and just set the font angle to something like 180, so it will somehow fake roundness. Okay. So, and um, actually see uh, my result of this procedure. We have a um, kind of uh, a tentacle kind of object with lots of arms swirling around. And on top of it, I added a um, twist, twist object, like this twist deformer. And so, just apply it and just I just played around with it a little bit till I find something that looks good to me. It's set to unlimited and then I also you know like just pushing around the rotation. 
that's my that's my basic structure and then I was playing around with some materials and I decided to create a subsurface scattering object as a subsurface scattering material. So let's have a look at this part. So first of all in the color channel I added a color texture with is just set to a red color. Then in my diffusion I had a small noise with a global scale of 50 and set it to multiply and then bring down its, its uh, strength to 20%. And then the most important thing is the luminance channel. You're going to apply the um, subsurface scattering effect and in the subsurface scattering panel you will have to choose a color and a path length so in the path length is a pretty important thing so the smaller it gets the more time it needs to be rendered properly if you have longer pathways it will render faster so but in my situation here i have pretty small geometry so I have to use a small pathway. So that's the way the light rays will will be pushed through, through the object. And this is very short distance. And therefore I decided to use a direct mode instead of the cache object. object. So direct is uh, the best mode to render with short path lengths. Everything else is untouched. Just leave the default settings. Um, did I forget anything? No. Just um, add a color you like. Then in the reflections channel I also added a GGX reflectance just played around with the settings a bit, bring down the color brightness, reflection strengths and so on. And also on next to it I had a just basic blend specular. Also just played around with it a little bit. Of course I decided to have I would like to have some reflections. Maybe maybe they uh I wasn't sure in the beginning if I would like to use reflections or not, so but I just applied a reflectance channel. And then in the bomb we have a little bomb of 10% with the noise in it. It's um a displaced Voronoi no noise and it's pretty small, just five percent. Bring down the high clip and also bring down its strength to something like 10. Then on top of it I added a displacement. For the displacement I uh, I used used a noise, a Naki noise, with a global scale of 80%. And also played around with the contrast a bit. So it was all about, you know, just adding stuff, render and then changing the settings back and forth till you till I find a sweet spot where everything looks like the way I wanted it. And then the height is set down to two. So it's pretty low, but make sure to apply the sub polygon displacement. Also you have to play around with the right settings. So in my situation the subdivision level of three was was okay. If you increase the number, you it will cause higher render times. So this uh, is my material. I applied it to my sweetener, sweetener with the UVW mapping as projection method, and then just close it down. And then um, we'll have a look at the environment settings. So I used a uh, 
an area light with area shadow with an intensity of 150 and it's a little bit warmish. So in the details I used a inverse square fall off for the light. So if I pull back you see I have a disc shape area light and this is my my light fall off. So my shadow is just set down to a density of 90% area shadow with a little bluish tint to it. Uh, I have a background object here, just apply the background. So my background material is just a diagonal 2D uh, gradient with a little it's a little bit brighter in the left upper corner. I also applied a sky object from the, from the panel here. I added a render tag or compositing tag and just switched off the scene by camera. And then I applied a reflection map. You can load in any image that you would like to use as a reflection map. Um, there are several HDRI pictures on the net, so or you can create it on your own. Just uh, or you will find something in the content browser of Cinema 4D as well. So uh, there are a lot of ways to play around with it. So the most Im most important thing for the um, devil field kind of look and chromatic aberration is to use a physical render setting. So let's have a look at this. So um, I used ambient occlusion as well, just uh, brighten it up a bit, and the maximum array length was set to fifty centimeters. So in the um, physical uh, physical renderer, uh, you have to switch on the default field, and then uh, I recommend you not to touch the lower settings here. Just uh, play around with the sample quality and the threshold. Uh, with the error threshold. So if you uh, use a higher number like 20 or something it will render much faster but also will be a lot noisier. And then you can just bring it down step by step until you find something that is suitable for your render. And on the other side you will have to make some modifications in your camera. First of all if you go to the top view, you have to find the right focus distance. So this plane will indicate where your focus will be located in the picture. And you will also you can also play around with the focal lens and also with the sensor size. I used a 50 millimeter lens. And then in the physical settings, I just brought down my f-stop settings to something like 1.35 so that's pretty low that's below the lowest uh, the lowest f-stop uh, and that will cause a, a, a huge amount of lens blur then I use a very high percentage of chromatic aberration about uh, 75 percent you can always push it up just above more like 120 and, and just play around with some of those settings and I also used a, a five blades uh, shape for my uh, for my um, bokeh so if you have a look at this picture here once again the displacement is pretty smooth and rounded. You can see the light is coming through 
and you will have less chromatic aberration effects um, in the out of focus range. And this render is uh, about uh, 1000 by 1000 pixels and it took about nearly 50 minutes to render it on my 6 core machine. Well, thanks for watching and uh, hope you can make your own renders now and try something with it and uh, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.